Hey everyone, finish watching the next episode of Beetleborgs, Drew and Flabber's Less Than Flabulous Adventure. The kids are rushing to Zoom Comics to throw a surprise birthday party for Heather. A new delivery of comics comes in. Heather comments on how much she likes the necklace that the villainous Magna of the new Beetleborgs comic has. Van and Trip come in with a huge bouquet of flowers for Heather, despite Trip's allergies. They tease Drew because he doesn't have the money for a nice gift. Drew wants Flabber's help to go into the comic and take the necklace. The Magnivores over here and plan to try and trap Drew in the comic. At Hillhurst, the monsters all try to take the comic for some reason. The kids use their civilian powers to get it back. Drew tells Flabber his plan. Flabber is reluctant but agrees. He goes with Drew into the comic. The Magnivores are spying from outside. They call the Jet Fighters. Joe and Roland ask the monsters to guard the comic while they take care of the Jet Fighters. In the comic, Drew and Flabber are caught by Magna's minions. Noxic, Typhus, and Jara try to take the comic from the Hillhurst monsters. Drew and Flabber, meanwhile, are being subjected to Magna's... singing. Flabber makes it snow, which subdues the bad guys for some reason, long enough for Drew to swipe the necklace, but then he ends up having to throw it to distract them. In the real world, the monsters and the Magnivores tear the comic in half. But luckily, Flabber and Drew manage to escape. The Magnivores teleport away. The Jet Fighters are still around, though, and there's a lot of them. Drew asks Flabber if they can bring Gargantus out of the comic. Flabber tells him that if it's in the comic, it's in their arsenal. With Gargantus, they manage to drive away the Jet Fighters. At Zoom Comics, Drew tries to think of something to give Heather. His friends say they'll help. They see some empty blue bottles. Roland uses his super speed to spin a bottle so fast it heats up. Joe uses her super strength to crush it into the sh shape of a jewel. Drew uses his telekinesis to steal Van's shoelace. He threads it through the jewel and makes a necklace. He gives it to Heather, and she loves the present. Van trips on his shoe and falls face first into a cake. Not that he minds. Beetleborg's streak of quality continues. Odd thing with this episode's title, the actual episode uses the word flabulous, while the DVD box and some websites, including the Metal Heroes Wiki, use the word fabulous. The title is especially awkward, too. I think it's a reference to Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, but why? What does Bill and Ted have to do with going inside a comic book? Why is less than added to it? Why not just call the episode Drew and Flabber's Flabulous Adventure? At the beginning, Heather walks in and looks right at where the kids are hiding and somehow doesn't see them. I don't know if it was a perspective thing or a genuine mistake that the crew didn't notice. The comic book world is impressive, but small. We only see one small part of the world, Magna's throne room. It's similar in look to the storybook world of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers' Storybook Rangers. There, though, we got to see a lot more of the world, and it made it seem a lot bigger. Power Rangers actually has Rangers go into a comic world in Dino Thunder. In that instance, though, the effect used to create the world was different. Instead of garishly colored sets, they use a filter to give everything a rotoscoping style effect. Magna, the main villain of the episode, stays in the comic the whole time. The Magnivores never release her. That's a bit strange. Also strange, there's no fight with her. She just stays sitting the whole time. Uniquely, she's not a monster from B-Fighter, and from what I can find, she's not inspired by any particular character from B-Fighter. The Beetleborg AVs see a lot of use here. As an adult, I'm far less invested in those scenes, but as a kid, I loved these sequences. Gargantus makes his debut, and it's pretty underwhelming. It's not that big of a deal, but I think they could have utilized Gargantus better. Maybe have a plot with an airborne threat that their AVs can't compete with and build up Gargantus more. As it is, Gargantus is just randomly mentioned, like, halfway through the episode, out of nowhere. Van and Trip get some genuinely funny moments. Trip sneezing and barely holding together while he brings Heather flowers is pretty funny for a couple of reasons. He could have just had Van deliver the flowers or their chauffeur Dudley, but... Trip goes along simply because he wants Heather to know it was him who brought the flowers. Van trips and falls into a cake, classic Saban gag. In a twist, he's actually happy to have fallen in cake. The only real negative I could give this episode is part of Drew's plot. Nano tells him he should make something for Heather. In the end, he does technically make something, but it's something that couldn't be replicated in the real world. 
The jewel is obviously professionally manufactured. It's only a small thing, though, and doesn't take away from the fun of the rest of the episode. So far, Beetleborgs has been great. Will we continue with the standalone adventures, or will there be a shake-up soon? So that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. See ya.